The Eternity Incident Dashboard that you're looking at displays all end-user incidents within an organization. For each incident, we can see the impact severity, the time the incident was detected, the applications and associated activities that are impacted, the number of impacted endpoints, the maximum number of impacted endpoints, and the current state of the incident. Currently, we see that incidents have been detected for Outlook, SAP, Clinical Manager, and the online banking applications. Some have users who are on desktops, some on physical desktops, some on virtual, some on Citrix, and some on mobile devices, and some across all four. Drilling down into the stock trading incident, we can see some powerful analysis of the business impact I described earlier. The pie chart shows us that only a small percentage of the total stock trading user population is impacted. Due to the critical nature of this, of this application, incident detection has been calibrated to open an incident with as few as five suffering users. Another powerful capability of Eternity's detection capabilities. By default, endpoints are grouped by location, but we can also group by department or subnet, office, or other attributes such as operating system, machine type, browser type, etc. Grouping by subnet, though, shows that the impacted users come from the same location and subnet. An indication that the problem might very well be related to either users' desktops are related or located. The problem classification, or probable cause analysis, identifies the unique commonality shared by the impacted user group as compared to users that are not experiencing the issues. In this case, probable cause with the highest probability is the hypervisor server hosting the impacted virtual desktops. This is because all of the impacted users are on server hype 3, and all of the non-impacted users are on different servers. Problem solved. Ravi, before we drill down further into the cause of the problem, let's take a look at the timeline of the incident and who exactly is impacted from our user base. The incident time machine allows us to navigate the timeline of the incident while analyzing the incident impact at any time. Moving the time bar across the lifetime of the incident dynamically updates all the incident impact analysis components on the form, such as the table view of impacted endpoints below. We can expand the detail level to get a view of the incident timeline for each endpoint and quickly see the status of measurements of that endpoint throughout the lifetime of the cycle or of the incident. Clicking on any of the incident Highlighted status block shows us, that the act, shows us the actual activity measurements for that endpoint and their deviation from either the automatically generated baseline or the manually set threshold. From here we can drill down to the performance navigator or to the endpoint dashboard for the selected user. The first thing we glean from Cody's dashboard is that he is using a virtual desktop. A quick glance shows us that Cody is using multiple applications and having some major issues with a stock trading app. Let's expand the stock trading app, Ravi, and drill down a little deeper. The activity section shows each deviating stock trading activity Cody has performed during our selected time frame, highlighting that performance for the search account activity is the deviating one. The classification earlier showed us that the users that are suffering all reside on the hypervisor host, server hype 3. So let's drill down into that host's resources to see if indeed the cause of the problem is the hypervisor. And we can clearly see that the degradation in user experience is due to the high CPU on the hypervisor host itself. So no need to get the network or the back-end application infrastructure teams involved. Problem solved. 